Hey guys, my name is Hakan and uh, today I will show you how we did the motion tracking on uh, our latest short, The Roof. Um, okay, let's open up the project here and let's first delete all the non-relevant footage. I'm going to show you the basic shot, how it looks when it's done. So we can see the flare starting, we can see the device screen opening and uh, yeah, so now there's basically a lot going on. We have a lot of camera shake since uh, we did not shoot on a tripod, we shot handheld and what we want to keep in mind is that we want to really only track the hand. If we track the background now, we could use it for uh, bullet hits or yeah, anything that happens in the background. Since we want to animate the device which uh, the character is holding in his hands, we will have to track the device or his hands since they are stuck to the device and make sure that we get a good tracking because otherwise uh, yeah, we will only track the background and if he's moving the hands uh, the, the device will not, the screen will not move with his hands and uh, that is what we want. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, oh by the way, if you didn't notice that, you can see kind of my tie is out of place, I might call it. Um, yeah, I think that happened halfway through the shooting, but uh, it's kind of, I didn't notice it, so, well, whatever. Let's first deactivate everything that we don't need right now. What is everything except for the shot? So here we have the shot again, and you can see there's no real... Uh, there's nothing happened. The device is not real. Yeah. So that's what we need to create. So let's do that. So we go into our footage here, and you hit m track motion hit position and hit the rotation box then you take those two pinpoints so that the computer gets a reference point what is uh, to see what is important so let's take the fingernail here and the outer box let, let's keep it fairly large so the computer gets a good uh, reference to what he has to track and let's say we track here the the device itself the only thing we do now is we hit the track forward button uh, here we go, he's analyzing, analyzing, analyzing. Okay, here we go. So what we do now is you select layer, new, and you create a null object. Uh, we've already done that here, and uh, you just call it null and just maybe call it tracking. Then you click back on your footage here, select edit target, and hit the null object. You take the null object, you edit target, then you hit apply. X and Y, yes. So what it does now, it, it has tracked the footage and lets us now let's shut everything else off for now and lets us now use the null object as a placeholder. So now if we take anything and we parent it to our null object, uh, it will kind of stay in the shot. So let's just type a uh, here. It's always, it's always hard to think of something to type when you have to type something. Okay, let's type that here. Let's uh, bring that clip maybe here as his device. And let us now parent it to the null tracking data. So what will happen now is you see it kind of stays in the shot. We can see that not every frame is uh, perfect, so in order to correct that, we can just go into the null object and um, correct the single frames which uh, are not uh, as we want them to be, so which are kind of dodging out. So you just correct the manual, that's the easiest and fastest way to do it. Um, simply just double click on the null object and go into the frames and like move the frame up, find the frame that's wrong, move it up until it's perfect, <coughs> and uh, yeah, then uh, you have the perfect track job. Okay. Let's go back to our original shot and let's take a look at it again. Let's switch everything off again and what we do now is we have our null object. So you take a random object like this one here and you just parent it to the null object and now you see 
it stays in the shot where we want it to. So um, what I did in order to kind of make this shot a little more dynamic and especially uh, if we have one or two frames which are not perfect, you can always kind of use some tricks to uh, hide those uh, minor mistakes. So what I do, for example, you could just use some flares or whatever you want to to kind of just add stuff to the shot and put some more effects in because effects are always cool. And of course we did some color correction here, we did some levels, some curves, and uh, yeah, but this is something you have to play around with yourself. I'm uh, not going to talk about color correction here. I do have to apologize for my voice. I have a bit of a cold um, and especially the quality of the video is not very good, but this is because I'm still looking for a good program to capture the screen. So if you have any suggestions, just write a comment with that, that would help me out. Um, so, uh, if you like this tutorial, subscribe, and uh, also subscribe to our FIPS Entertainment channel, which is right here. And of course, check out the video here. Uh, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, I hope you would tune in next time. And I will definitely put up another tutorial, since uh, this was very, very fun to do. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.